Hello, and thank you for joining us. We'll be getting the presentation in about one minute. We're just going to give everyone a chance to log in. Again, thank you for joining us. If you just logged in, we're just going to begin in one more minute. We're just going to give everyone a chance to finalize their logging into the system. All right, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Miro Consulting webinar on recent changes with Oracle support. My name is Sean Donahue, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Miro Consulting. Joining me today is Miro Consulting Senior Vice President and Partner, Elliot Colon, and Senior Strategic Account Manager, Adam Jackson. If you have any questions during the broadcast, please use the question box in your webinar control panel, and we'll answer them at the end of the session. Uh, please note that if you ask a question, we won't say who's asking the question, but we will read the question out to the audience and try to answer it with uh, the best we can with the time available. So let me tell you a little bit about Miro. Uh, before we begin, Miro Consulting is a leading global provider of software asset management and subscription management services for Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, Adobe, and Salesforce. We specialize in license management, audit advisory, negotiation tactics, support management, and cloud services. Our mission is to help our clients maximize ROI on their software license and subscription investments, stay in compliance, and negotiate successful contracts and audit settlements. And again, please note, you can ask questions during the broadcast in the question control panel, and they will only be visible to us, the presenters. Uh, so with that taken care of, let's get started with the presentation. Adam, please, uh, excuse me, Elliot, please take it away. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Elliot Cologne from Miro uh, Consulting here. And I thank you, uh, everyone, for, for joining. And uh, I see we're already starting to get some, some questions in, so that's, that's great. And um, but uh, I, I, as for those of you who who, who may be uh, uh, more novice uh, to to Oracle and Oracle support, um, what we're what we're talking about here today is the annual support renewals that are created after the purchase of of a license by a software license from Oracle. So that is the 22 percent uh, of the license cost line item that's charged for annual support paid in advance that reoccurs annually, uh, typically with an uplift. Um, so just putting that out there so in case uh, you know that there's any confusion over what Oracle uh, support is um, and in what we're gonna be discussing today. Um, Adam, you wanna start with that first slide? Uh, sure, thanks Elliot. Uh, again, this is Adam Jackson. Um, over the last uh, several years, there's been significant changes in Oracle's support. Uh, they've significantly reduced the interaction uh, between customers and the uh, Oracle support sales team. Um, there's been uh, what used to be uh, sc uh, support teams scattered throughout the country and, and Romania. They've, they've really centralized now in Colorado and have eliminated a drastic part of the staff. What that means to the client is there's there's really no longer a dedicated support representative that's assigned to the majority of clients. When you have a support service request or looking to upload uh, POs, uh, you don't have someone who can help you. Uh, you have to call a 1-800 number or put in a customer ticket on the Oracle store portal and uh, request assistance, the person that you get that responds to you is, is no longer the same support person that you know had a relationship with your co um, company for many years. Instead, it's a case-by-case -case system. So uh, what we're seeing is a lot of clients that are incredibly frustrated with this. Um, there's just not the, the interaction that, they, that they're accustomed to in previous years. And the Oracle store uh, uploading of the POs has its own difficulties. Next slide. 
All right. And uh, in, in terms of uh, what's stated here, and I think this is important to point out because um, there there's some misconceptions out there over over Oracle costs, and and understand that in most uh, Oracle contracts, um, Oracle uh, does not have uh, a fixed amount that they will charge in perpetuity. Uh, typically, Oracle um, either um, puts a fixed amount for a couple years after initial purchase for annual support, and other times they cap the amount of an uplift, uh, typically between 1% and 5%, and we see the averages uh, in, historically being around 3%. Um, now, or Oracle has changed uh, their uplift to 4% increase annual year over year. What that means is, you know, whatever you were paying uh, last year, for Oracle support renewals uh, is now 4% greater this year unless you have a negotiated price hold in place for annual support. Understand that in no contract is there a, a fixed price in perpetuity. It, it has a term, and that term uh, you know, can be one year, it can be a couple of years, but eventually, if not now, uh, you may get a renewal that's uh, much greater than, than, the, than the year before. Uh, change slide. Adam, you want to hit this? Uh, yes, yes. And um, well, I'll, before we do that, I just want to go back to the, the last slide real quick. Um, or Oracle did this without notification uh, to any of their clients. They uh, just sent renewals uh, with 4% annual uplift rather than 3%. And when Miro dug deeper, uh, it, it was – at that time where they finally admitted to the 1% uh, addition uh, across the board for all clients. So uh, the, the next issue that we've seen with the Oracle uh, store is what Oracle calls the auto renew option for annual support. Uh, when you go into the Oracle support store, there is a, um, you, you see a snapshot of all the contracts that you own and that can that are up for renewal. Some of them are auto renew eligible. Some of them have already been auto renewed. Uh, the when you go to process the renewal, the auto renew checkbox it is automatically checked. So if you don't check that uncheck that box, the next year uh, you will be automatically invoiced by Oracle 30 days prior to the support expiration date. Uh, what this does is it reduces uh, the, the flexibility clients have in reviewing their annual support contracts for inaccuracies. Uh, you'll, you'll get invoices before POs are even approved or processed, which can cause major issues with clients. Uh, we've, we've seen clients who uh, won't pay invoices unless there's a PO associated to them, and if Oracle is providing an invoice in advance um, with no PO tied to it, then you know these things never get paid and uh, could result in, in significant issues with uh, Oracle and, and the client down the road. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so so we have here some examples um, to point out, uh, and and you know some some of which uh, may have been touched on uh, a little bit by by Adam, by Adam uh, Jackson here, uh, but uh, you know we have a client uh, who failed to receive uh, renewal notices. Um, it it could be to either people leaving an organization, um, or um, perhaps they've been reassigned, um, or things going to junk mail. Um, or Oracle just simply had the wrong uh, address, which is in the next uh, uh, bullet. We've seen that quite a bit where, you know, Oracle essentially uh, deflects blame uh, almost entirely onto its clients uh, if uh, annual support uh, is, has lapsed. You know, in their view is, uh, you know, we, we should have received proper address and email up front of where you want your support renewals to go. And um, we'll send it to that address, and um, it, you know, your, it's your responsibility to renew. It's also your responsibility to let us know if you didn't receive your, your renewal on time. But we need to have that PO for that renewal 30 days beforehand. Um, customers, uh, you know, uh, overpaying on, on, on support, uh, uh, you know, th that's also another um, um, situation that, 
you know, you want to ensure that, you know, whatever you're actually using in deployment, um, you are redoing on support. Uh, that's typically easier said than done um, because uh, typically there's some assumptions made as to what licenses are being used, how they're being used, um, as well as what uh, licenses are required for proper compliance. Uh, you may have a lot of shelfware as well on those renewals. Uh, next. Okay, this, uh, this next slide kind of pulls this all together and, and, and this is or Miro's Support Renewal Management Program for Oracle. Um, you know, this is how we help clients overcome some of the obstacles that Ellie and I have discussed over the last few minutes. Um, Miro will manage and act as an extension of, of clients' uh, IT teams to review um, all annual support with Oracle to ensure accuracy uh, and reconcilia reconciliation of an organization's Oracle support contracts. Um, we call this our SRM service. Uh, it alleviates the burden of managing uh, all this often frustrating and time-consuming area of Oracle software management. And we also provide customized options um, to clients on a case-by-case -case basis that, that makes this uh, burden uh, far easier to, to manage. Next slide. Okay. Um, in, in reference to uh, Miro Support Renewal Program, and 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 I and I think that it's it's important. You know, this is not just about you know um, having us, you know, uh, talk about all the things that that we can do within our services. I mean, that's uh, this is more more important uh, than more importantly is explaining what any client of Oracle's should be doing. Um, uh, uh, you know, annually, if not more often, with annual renewals uh, to ensure that they're getting the most out of their Oracle investment. Um, many of our clients are, are, you know, spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, um, and in some cases, millions of dollars on, on Oracle licensing, um, and then they have to spend, you know, their 22% on annual support in order to maintain uh, active uh, support on those licenses. And what we find is is that you know the, the majority of companies that we talk to um, are are renewing uh, annual support when they get them, um, but they're not necessarily doing it efficiently or in any way strategically uh, to assist their company in reducing dollars and getting the most value out of those licenses. So the things that we can do to assist clients uh, in that regard is we can coordinate support renewal delivery and record coordinate is ensure that you're getting your renewals on time to the proper person and in the proper format that you need to see so you can reconcile and, and validate. Uh, we'll do a pre-review of those renewals to ensure that they're accurate, accurate in terms of cost, uh, term, dates, um, address, uh, make sure they have the proper legal names in place. Um, if you're supposed to be charged tax, you know, it, we'll make sure of it. If you're supposed to be tax exempt, we'll make sure of it. Uh, if you need a term that's different than 12 months, uh, less than 12 months, more than 12 months, uh, we, we, have, uh, uh, we can make those customizations to those renewals. Um, as far as payment, we want, it, we want to ensure that, that support renewals do not terminate. Uh, because in some cases, it could also affect the value uh, and, and the deployment ability of the licenses. Uh, this can happen through accidental oversight, but it happens quite often, we find, that uh, licenses are, are, are just lapsed and, and they can't uh, then be uh, reinstated without steep fees uh, imposed by, by Oracle. Um, you need confirmation. There's another thing is that sometimes it's very tough because you don't have a dedicated annual support renewal rep now to get a confirmation when something has been received or when a renewal has been processed. We'll ensure that you receive a written confirmation of exactly what your support entitlement is, when it was renewed, what cost it was renewed for, um, and other information that you can use to track the, the most valuable assets that you own. The customization is very, very important, and this is what many of our larger clients use us for, especially uh, as, as a big uh, um, eyesore uh, removal, um, and that is the customization of quotes, of invoices. Um, we could break renewals down to department, division, project, products, applications, uh, CSIs. You know, we have one client who says we want 
renewals for development to go on one quote. We want renewals to come for enterprise on another and DR on still another. We have other clients who have 50, 60 renewals that say, hey, we really only want to receive two. Uh, can you consolidate that? Um, and we have others that have two and say we want 50 because we want uh, we have an internal chargeback system that is very complex and we want every group, every individual business owner to get their own renewal and we are able to do that as well. Then on top of that, there's a, a reconciliation um, that has to be done. Very daunting task, especially for companies that do charge back. You know, it's one thing to be able to charge, to, to be able to charge clients, uh, internal clients, but then it's another thing to be able to track where all those assets are going. Um, and and it, to ensure that there's reconciliation. Now, why is reconciliation so important? Well, I'll tell you why. If you have one business owner who has, let's say, a shortfall of, let's say, two CPUs of partitioning, but then, let's just say, in Europe, you have another division that has an excess of two CPUs of partitioning or some subset. Um, well, you know, it makes a lot more sense for the company to be able to know that information on the, you know, at real time and be able to allow you and empower you with the information so you can transfer that asset to the appropriate deployment uh, area and then change the chargebacks accordingly by knowing real time what the cost is of those assets and being able to know where they are at any time, who's over licensed, who's under licensed, or, or uh, and what we can do with this is also to identify what licenses can be traded in for other licenses. So even though you may not see an exact matchup of an excess versus a shortfall, perhaps you have some components that can be upgraded or migrated to be able to eliminate a shortfall. So th this is part of it as well. Um, there's also cost reduction um, um, strategies as well that are built into this. Uh, it's amazing when the majority of clients that will, will uh, hire us for support renewal management are mostly trying to eliminate uh, um, you know, what they seem as, as areas where they need more efficiency or where they've seen terminations happen or, or they've seen other daunting tasks that are impossible uh, to tackle um, given complexity of Oracle licensing. But the, the, the side benefit, which ends up being very important, is the actual reduction in cost uh, and the fact that we can actually reduce the cost of your annual support uh, as well as the amount of cost to manage the annual support. So this is two parts of it. There's the actual cost of the renewals, and then there's the cost to manage the renewals, and we could affect positive for our clients both sides. So besides the customized quoting and invoicing, uh, there's also the ability to reduce your internal support costs uh, of managing this, as well as the cost of the renewals in and of themselves due to our volume that we do manage. Next. All right, uh, so now we're going to do some questions from the audience. Uh, I'm going to start, and then Adam Morelli, one of you can take this. Uh, the question is regarding the, uh, the checkbox on the support. It says, is a customer locked in for another year if they check off auto renewal? Must they give notice then to leave support? I'll, I'll take this one. Um, that's a good question. Uh, no, uh, in, in short, you, you are not obligated uh, to, and you're not locked in for the second year of support. Uh, basically, what that means is uh, you're going to have to request uh, to be opt out of auto renew. Uh, you can do that anytime 100 day, 120 days prior to the, uh, the next renewal date. Um, but if you wait until it gets closer and closer to the actual renewal date, then it's going to auto renew, and then it, then you are locked in for that second year. So if, if you accidentally leave it checked, there are ways to get it unchecked. Uh, you have to make a formal request to Oracle to do so. And Adam, that's something we could do through our support renewal. Oh, management. absolutely. Uh, as part of our our, our uh, support renewal management program, uh, you know, the first and foremost thing that that, that Elliot and myself do is, is assure that none of these things are checked on auto renew uh, because it needs we need to give ourselves enough time to review every single contract that we, that, that we manage and we manage hundreds of them um, and uh, by checking one we you know we don't want to make sure that there's no no mistakes uh, from Oracle and they don't pull the wool over our client's eyes and get one auto renew automatically. Thanks, Adam. Uh, I got the next question from our audience. Uh, have you noticed Oracle breaking down the license verification form in order to pinpoint different licensing metrics? 
uh, verification form, meaning on 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 ULA type certification. I think is is that what that is, or because uh, uh, on, on on mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it doesn't say, on, but Elliot just assumed that it is. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, because on 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 UL, on ULA uh, renewals or during the certification process, um, we've seen uh, both situations happen where we've seen on uh, we've reviewed situations where where support is it, it, you know we'll just show one lump sum uh, with a lump uh, total quantity of licenses which may not break out the fact that historically each may have been purchased in a different way with different terms and conditions and different metrics uh, definitions involved uh, but may just lump it all together as one quantity but then the devil's in the details and there may be more uh, substantial and very valuable information behind the scenes. Uh, when we do a license review and what we call a friendly audit for our clients, we will typically go back to the source documents. Uh, we'll typically go back to the source documents to try to uncover um, the hidden information uh, that, that may be revealed, revealed uh, by looking at those documents. Uh, let's give you an example. We had a situation where a client, you know, had yeah, I, 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 let's just say a thousand. I, it was it was more than that, but uh, a thousand CPUs of a, of a specific database enterprise edition license, as well as a, a, a company uh, options and packs. Well, um, unbeknownst to the client, because the way it was renewing and during certification uh, uh, renewal, um, it was listed as one thousand database enterprise edition. Um, but uh, within that agreement. Uh, we were able to determine that only 500, uh, roughly half, uh, were actually for worldwide usage, and the other half uh, were actually restricted to a very specific use for a very specific group within Canada, and that's it. Um, so meanwhile, the client was renewing um, year after year, paying top dollar for their renewal under the assumption of full value, full coverage, full use, when actuality, uh, only half were such and the other half were very limited uh, value. So now, if they would have known that, and to our help, we were able to remedy that, uh, they could then restructure uh, that agreement to more appropriately pay annual support, and, at the, you know, and or, this is at the same time, look for options to either upgrade those additional licenses or terminate those licenses if they felt that they were undervalued and not usable. Uh, so that's one of the things we can do there. Uh, Ellie, if, next for the next question, if you could just check your mic levels, we are just losing you a little bit. Um, uh, we have the next question here, uh, and I'll leave this to whoever wants to. Ask. I'll answer the next question. Actually, uh, essentially, the question asks: Does Miro uh, take on state and regional contracts, public sector contracts? The answer is yes, we do. We have many public sector clients. Uh, we work in, uh, in almost every state at the federal level, so that is absolutely something Miro can help with. Uh, and then the next question. Uh, is essentially, so this is an open-ended one. We get this question a lot. Uh, so I'll ask uh, Elliot and Adam to just give us the short version here. Uh, what factors do you feel are the most likely to bring on an audit from Oracle? Okay, well, I, 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 could, I could start with that, and then, you know, Adam, Adam could always chime in. Um, in, in terms of, of audits, audits can come about from various sources. Um, they could be sponsored by a sales team who has suspicions of, 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 of license deficiencies. Uh, they can come from annual support calls that are being called in on products that are not owned um, or, or products that may be, uh, uh, you know, uh, under, under, uh, under license. For, for an example, if a client's calling on an enterprise uh, deployment problem on Let's just say uh, rack, a uh, reapplication cluster, but the inventory report shows only development licenses owned. Uh, that that would be a trigger. Um, you also have situations where very very large enterprise environments maybe not uh, did not have uh, have any purchases for a very long period of time, which could be something that makes uh, an Oracle uh, team or or an audit group suspicious. Uh, meaning that there must have been lots of activity going on over the years in terms of dynamicness of the business. Uh, how could this not have translated to some kind of change in the Oracle uh, footprint or landscape? Um, then you also have other uh, more nuanced type situations where, you know, maybe there was um, uh, a, a, an, op a, an option for a client to move into a cloud direction and Oracle wants to ensure that the client is compliant on their on-premise um, 
you know, so they can uh, properly gauge what they should be offering on the cloud. Um, or in other cases, it's Oracle, uh, you know, and a client who are just simply not seeing eye to eye on a specific definition or, or a specific deployment question. And now Oracle's trying to uh, utilize their contractual obligation uh, if they so wish to, uh, uh, to, to take it on, which is to audit a client. In all cases, there's two kinds of audits, which I think is very important to mention. There's a formal audit and there's an informal audit. And it's important that um, a, a, an owner of Oracle assets knows the difference. Um, you have a formal audit, which is an audit that starts uh, from um, an LMS, License Management Services uh, Auditor uh, from Oracle. It's a formal letter that calls out the specific uh, language within your contract that it's executing against, which allows them to come in and audit you. It would also specify the terms and conditions of the audit. Uh, in other words, when the audit will start, um, what they need from you, and how they would like to kick it off. Um, so that would be more the formal variety. The informal variety, it would be from a sales rep or from someone in, in the sales or marketing teams, which will call out uh, specific questions that they have um, and call it more of a, of a review, but not, but not, uh, but have it not come from a, 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 a formal auditor from Oracle. Uh, and I'll just add to that, one of the big ones that you, uh, you should watch out for is if you're undergoing any uh, mergers, acquisitions, and divestitures. Uh, one of the things that triggers uh, an Oracle audit is they simply read about your company in one of those situations. And many Oracle contracts uh, don't have language or have adverse language uh, around mergers and divestitures. And what you think might transfer to the new entity may in fact not. Uh, or may under certain conditions, et cetera. It's one of those it depends kinds of things. Uh, so speaking of it depends, uh, I know we have a number of questions left uh, that our audience has asked. Uh, most of these, in fact, all of these will fit into that it depends kind of answer. So what we're going to do is we're gonna contact you after the webinar individually uh, and help answer any further questions that you may have. Uh, so with that, that ends our webinar for today. I wanna to thank Adam and Elliot for participating and everyone else who joined the call. Uh, and again, uh, if you have any uh, other questions, please call us at 732-738-8511. Uh, you can email us at sales at miroconsulting.com. And you can also just look, up, look us up on the web at miroconsulting.com. Thank you very much. This ends the webinar. Have a great day.